Hello and welcome. Uh, we are back uh, in the new unit or new chapter of this tutorial. Today we are going to discuss validation. It's something I'm very excited about to be honest. Because uh, I think there is no good form without some good validation for the user. Like you need to tell the user if the username is short or required, if the age is um, maybe over 18, over 25, over 13, like social media, I'm not sure if the number is 13. You know, and a lot of other stuff. So let's get right to it. Enough talk. Uh, first of all, let me introduce you to your f new best friend, um, and it's the documentation of the React hook form. Because, as we you all know, we are discussing React hook form here. So, as you can see, this is uh, version six I'm using, but you can also go to version seven. And if you go right here, this is um, in the API. And if you scroll down a little bit, you would find this uh, validation that you can use. Uh, required, max lens, min lens, max, min, pattern, pattern is for regex, uh, validate, it's a special case for We are going to see a lot of these ones uh, in the next chapter, two chapters. And, well, let's just get right to it then. So I'm gonna get my terminal out of the way, and let's just start. So uh, as you can see, this is our code from last time, and if you take a look right here in the form, I have added another field for the phone number, because I'm going to do some validation for phone numbers that just take phone numbers, and not, not just any numbers, not any random text. So we are going to start with the uh, username. Uh, I'm going to add this ref, apparently I forgot. So, okay, save now. How do we do? I think you got a glimpse of it. So you open a function and you open a parenthesis or an object parenthesis. Now you set your rules inside of this object. So for example, this username, I want it to be required. So I am going to tell it required. I am going, by default, it's the required is true. So by default true, I think it's going to work like this. <coughs> now I'm, I want a min lens. The difference between min and the min length is min is a value, like um, the minimum is, is a number, so it's between 0 and whatever, or if you want it to be less than 0. The min length is a uh, number of characters in this word, so I'm going to make sure, like 2, like, uh, well, I think it's like this value, okay, yeah, 2, and let's just leave it like this for now. <coughs> okay, okay, uh, Okay, I guess maybe this is something. Yeah, okay, so required you have to tell it true, not just like this. So right now, if I am going to... You, if you remember, when we submit, we get data, we are f inserting to the form. So now if I submit, as you can see, I'm going to put my cursor somewhere else, or in the email, for example. It takes me back to the username, and because there's something wrong. But I have no idea what's wrong, so I... Uh, I am, for, as a developer, as I am, I know what's wrong. But for you guys, or for a user, or someone else, you don't know what's wrong because you don't write this code. You don't. You're just a user trying to sign in into an account or sign up or whatever the case is. So, how do we tell the user this? I mean, uh, wouldn't it be nice if there is like a message down below this input telling the user how this username is required or shouldn't be less than two? Like, for example, let me just type one character and move my cursor and yeah back again so let's do it so let's get back to it so for required it's a special case i guess uh, instead of just uh button true uh, you can just like this by default if you insert required equal a specific string it will take uh, the react hook form will understand that this a required field and the error message is going to be whatever you, uh, you put inside this uh quotation marks so i'm going to say user name oh my god oh my god is required okay sorry uh okay uh, this is that but still there is no way for the user to see uh, this error now to be honest there is a way react form provides this and i guess you have guessed it's this errors right here so i'm gonna use it like this i'm gonna say spam and right here i'm gonna be like errors 
and yeah this is where this name come in place so the input name the attribute name so you're gonna put this one and dot and message yeah it's just like this it's like it's, just, it's like this and it's gonna give you the message you want there's a lot of different ways but i think this is the best way for dynamic if you have more than one mess one possible message and you want to show the user the right message without typing too many codes like i can say if it's required and i can it's, but it's just this is, this is easy and i'm gonna make it conditional because i don't want this to be showing uh unless there's an error so username like this and i'm gonna put this right here because by default the errors that username should be undefined unless there is a message okay so now we are going to run our code and hopefully yes i i have a class that i already added so class name is going to be error it's right here in the app you will get it by default if you're following the code from github and it's just symbol a color and stuff like this nothing too much nothing too fancy so now let me s i will reload the page i think react hook for me some reload when you add validation and stuff like this sorry so i am going to submit now and as you can see here you go a uh, very easy simple validation that tells the user what error is going on so the user knows what exactly should he be doing so now i'm going to be entering this and yeah now there is an error so it's not submitting but again the user doesn't know what's going on now as i told you required the special case usually you have a value like min and min length and pattern and stuff like this so you have another um, another uh, attribute or an object property and as you get i probably guess it's message if you don't guess that's okay i hear the, the structures usually say as you probably guess and usually i don't guess i'm just joking oh my god so yeah uh, username okay shouldn't yeah uh, okay um, yeah I'm still not used to this keyboard sorry for that oh my god listen to characters now let's put this closing quotation again save and let's reload the page now I'm going to enter one char two characters and it works. Now I'm going to delete this one and as you can see, it's on the fly right away and you don't need to submit for the error to show and this is the beauty about it, like, yes. But React Hook Form has one small thing that if you skipped the going into the input, like if, for example, um, my cursor never passed, like let me show you. Like right now, my cursor is not inside the username, so the error will not show unless my cursor goes into the username or I press submit. And this is for a better uh, user experience. I mean, imagine if the error message was shown from the start, you would have a form with all red text. Like, uh, for example, let me show you some example. Like, the form is like this, and class name is error, and right here, this message. Okay. Now let's be a little bit extreme and put it right after every. Okay, at least three of them. I mean four maybe. I mean, ah, what's up? See, like this is not a user experience. This is not a good user experience to have to look in the form and see all this right from the start. Like, you know, this is not good. So we are going to just control Z all of this. Okay, all right. Okay. So now if I go and leave and click submit okay i don't know yeah it needs to reloading uh, sorry that's what that's one thing of react hook form you need to reload if you have changed your validation uh other than that work is just fine i think yeah as you can see okay <coughs> so let's just hurry in and get more validation out of this so for the age for example i won't say the age is required so i guess required is just going to be the same line is required you can also always change your messages to fit your business logic but i'm just going to be using some sense more so main for example is going to be value and the value is going to be maybe 13 like we don't want you our user to be younger than 13. oh so now the minimum age should okay uh, i'm just going to save something okay age shouldn't be less than now if I'm going to be like Anna and right here I'm going to be entering 10 years old and okay something is telling me this is not right okay oh, okay 
So, um, I guess it's because I didn't add the error message. So let's add that error message. Okay, so uh, right here I'm gonna add the error message for every input just to save some time. Uh, yeah, probably this is going to be showing the error for the username for every input, so this is not right. So you have to edit it. And again, you edit it by showing the the name, the name of the input. So I'm gonna copy it and I'm going to click one and then Control D in my uh, editor. Usually, it selects the next one with the same word. So I'm gonna change both of them. Just if you're wondering what I just did. Again, control D and both of them, and control D and both of them, control D and both of them. Damn, this is too much. Okay, I guess you get the, the, the gist out here, so I'm just not gonna care about myself. Okay, uh, now this is working. So let's reload the page again, just because you know. Now I am going to be submitting, and as you can see, both of these, these because they don't have validation rules yet. So even though I have the error, uh, there is no error because there is no validation. So now I'm going to be entering this. As you can see, I'm going to be entering the error is gone. Now I'm going to be enter one. Yeah, and maybe 18. Okay, maybe 12. Okay. So you see, it's, it's so smart. It's it's very much reactive to what you do. Uh, so you don't have to click submit and be surprised. Oh, and just have to go through all these again. Usually, if you fill in a little bit of a larger form, your user might be in a hurry. You don't want you don't want to discourage your user from. You know, repeating himself all over the data base or the form or towards the, the screen he's seeing. Okay, so let's move on and add our validation for something else other than the age. And right now, I will disc I will encourage you all to uh, boost the video, try to add validation uh, for the phone number to make it required. And if you could add a pattern for it, uh, that would be great. If you couldn't, we will do it together. Okay. All right. Were you successful? If you were successful, that's great. If you weren't, that's okay. We will do it together right now. So let's get to it. So um, let me see, required again. Okay, yeah, it's the same line, so I'm just gonna copy it. I'm, I'm too lazy, to be honest. So, okay. Don't forget to change your label because you want your user to know what's, ex what's required, you know? You don't want to confuse the user. Now the pattern. Okay, to be honest, the pattern is a regex pattern, and I'm not a regex expert. So I have a couple regex uh, expressions right here in the utils helpers. You will find it in your code if you are following with me through the same get table. So right here I have a phone pattern and an email pattern. Let's copy paste it. Okay, yeah, like this. And the pattern again is an object with value. You can always use a pattern like this. But then the user will not be getting, like, if you do it like this, it will be correct. But the user will not be getting um, a message. Like, let me show you. Right now, the user, if we are going to be entering this and submit, it's not submitting me. But it's not telling me what's wrong. Like, everything else is right, so it should be. But it, as you can see, if I put my cursor away, it gets me back. But it's not telling me. Now, if I get uh, to the OK, yeah. I'm, I'm clicking any numbers now if you call and someone answers it's not me so now as you can see this is a correct pattern but the users have no idea so to avoid this we add uh, we use the, the object like this uh, with value and okay sorry uh, oh my god message and we add the message we want like uh, maybe invalid I prefer for better user friendly experience, please enter a valid phone number. Like you can say invalid, but I think this is better. I don't know. Okay, refresh the page as you say as you remember. Okay, uh, so I'm at okay, maybe Jack this time and twenty five and now let's enter some text. Okay, submit as you can see it's a interval for me. So okay, alright. So maybe, um, yeah, it's not gonna go away until I type a full number. Okay, let's go through what this regex expression is about. Uh, let's uh, look at it right here. Or maybe right here because I don't want you to get confused with anyone. So this plus says that it's optional and not uh, mandatory that you enter a plus. What if it's uh, maybe not a local phone number? So like this, maybe for example, uh, Algerian phone number. I'm gonna just copy this. It's, uh, I don't know. Let's generate a different one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna copy this. 
Now it's saying inval uh, in, uh, invalid because uh, I do not allow spaces, so I'm just gonna be uh, taking all this space away. And as you can see, it's a valid phone number now. So this is uh, the gesture of this plus, and from 0 to 9, any number from 0 to 9, three numbers, then an optional dash. By the way, I'm not sure if the optional dash is going to work with this pattern. Like, as I said, I'm not an expert with the regex pattern. Some, sometimes uh, the optional dash works, sometimes it doesn't, but the number itself does work without dashes. But you can look into this in Google a little bit more. For my use case, usually this pattern worked. Uh, again, from 0 to 9, three numbers, and from 0 to 9, optional from 4 to 9. Like, it, the minimum is 4 numbers, the maximum is 9 numbers. Because uh, if you're using uh, a foreign number, it m you might need more numbers than if you're using a local number. And sometimes uh, a number vary from country to country, especially the, the last four segments. So I wanted to make sure that this is a valid pattern for all uh, numbers nearly among the world. Like, I, I googled how many uh, digits uh, is uh, a lot the longest number in the world. I don't remember what it was exactly, it was a British number, I think. You can look into that, if that interests you. So this was too much of information, I think, so I guess we should take a break here. In the next video, we are going to continue our validation. We are going to look at validation the emails, and we are going to take a look at the password and confirm password. Uh, and you will find the pattern for the email in the code, so I, in the helper style. So I would like to encourage you if you have, the, if you would like to try to do it on your own, and then you can follow up and compare with me in the next lecture and compare your code again with my code. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, see you then, and have a good day.